story to tell. In the 1990s, although not public, Americans knew about the existence of Mikoyan Project 144. This was Russia's first Federation fighter, the biggest rival of the F-22 steel fighter. The Soviet Union began designing and constructing Federation fighters long before the appearance of the Park F-A project, which later known as the Su-57. In 1983, the Mikoyan Design Bureau began implementing the combined task program to maximize efficiency and develop technologies to be used for all classes of aircraft. The research project included engines, avionics, and weapons, as well as tactical and technical assignments by the Air Force and Air Defense. In 1987, this defense project was approved and in 1989, there was a preliminary design of a heavy mantra aircraft, also known as the MiG-144. Mikoyan stated that the combination of the aerodynamic, weapons, and avionics of the MiG-144 makes it superior to any contemporary fighter, including the US F-22A. The project was held in 1991, after the political crisis. Russia then took over the project, and after all efforts, a prototype was completed, officially announced in January 1999. The prototype made its maiden flight on February 29, 2000. But the Russian government's decision in 2002 on Park FA project buried the MiG-144. The early prototype is stored in the Gromov Aviation Research Institute in the city of Zhukovsky near Moscow. The final specification of the MiG-144 remains a mystery. According to information published by Russian media, the MiG-144 was built in the form of a Montero Strike fighter, dealt wing, twin turret, single seat. Theoretically, the aircraft was equipped with the most advanced technologies, giving it excellent steel and combat capabilities. The manufacturer made use of saving materials in aircraft construction, including aluminum lithium alloys combined with steel and titanium alloys, along with composite materials. The MiG-144 had an empty weight of 18 tons and a maximum takeoff weight of 35 tons. Other basic specifications include a length of 19 meters, a wingspan of 15 meters, and a height of 4.5 meters. From the outside, the fuselage was square routed and beautiful. Its aerodynamic design was different from the previous Soviet boxy airframes. The single cockpit was located behind the small nose. The pilot seated under an old glass two-piece canopy, giving him a great view. The forward fuselage of MiG-144 features a closed copper canal layout located in front of the main wings. Controllable gave the aircraft remarkable maneuverability. The canals had a landing edge sweep of 58 degree and had a prominent dog tooth, which improved airflow over the wings at high angles of attack. The main wings were of delta ship. The landing edge squeaked at 52 degrees. The overall design had minimized surface area and reduced drag, helped significantly improve in flight efficiency and steel characteristics. Two rectangular air intakes were arranged below the cockpit, exhausted through their respective vectoring nozzle rings. The MiG-144 did not have horizontal tail fins like conventional aircraft. Only a pair of vertical fins were mounted outboard of each engine compartment at the rear. The aircraft had a tricycle landing gear system with a single 
dual wheel landing gear in the front, and two single wheels in the rear. The MiG 144 was powered by a pair of thrust vectoring Lyuga Sartan AR 41F series after burning turbofan engines, delivering 176 kN of thrust H with afterburner. This was the first engine in the world to feature thrust vectoring. Thanks to this advanced engine, the MiG 144 was capable of super maneuverability, allows aircraft unprecedented agility in the skies particularly in lateral movements. Theoretically, the MiG-144 could reach a maximum speed of 2,760 km per hour, equivalent to Mark 2.24, a range of 4,000 km, a service ceiling of 17,000 meters. The fighter was equipped with a glass cockpit and features a bronze Doppler radar. The NO-14 radar with a range of 420 km and target detection from 250 km, was able to track up to 40 targets and shoot against 20. The radar system has a passive electronically scanned array antenna and is linked to a fire control system. In terms of weapons, it is believed that the MiG-144 was designed with internal weapon bays, although demonstrator was showcased with external weapon pylons. The standard internal weapon fitting was a single 30mm Eastmas GSS-3010 series cannon for a close-in self-defense with 250 rounds. Other weapons included R-77, R-73, R-37R to air missiles. Drop tanks could be carried under the wings as well. In 2000, the MiG-144 prototype flew twice, and then the project was shelved for reasons that weren't really clear. According to some Russian military sources, the main reason for the freezing of the MiG-144 project was that Moscow had made its choice with the 5th generation steel fighter. Specifically, the Russian Air Force chose the Park FA for its 5th generation steel fighter program. In addition to the above reasons, according to Russian media, the reason that Moscow was caught with MiG-144 fighter was because, at that time, the limited budget did not allow Russia to simultaneously implement two steel aircraft programs. However, what was really the reason why the MiG-144 program had to be served, only the Russian military itself knows. In 2010, China released the first images of the J-20 Air Superiority Fighters, which were nearly identical to the MiG-144. Some military analysts believe that the Chinese fifth-generation J-20 drew heavy inspiration from or was fundamentally based on the MiG-144, citing similarities in its canals, tail section, and dark light aerodynamic design. To date, the J-20 has become the fifth-generation fighter of the Chinese Air Force, while the MiG-144 is forever an experimental fighter of the Russian Air Force. My video of Mikoyan Project 144 ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.